In 33 years, that man done a lifetime's work. More than we'll ever do. I'm 67 years old coming up this August. And he done a lot more in 33 years than I've done. I started serving the Lord when I was 19 years old. And he done a lot more than I've done since then. And I've done in my time frame. But in 33 years, he done the work he had to do. When he was on the cross, suffering on the cross, you know, they had a, they had a thing made up they called the painkiller that they give the ones that was crucified. They had that much humanity about them that they wouldn't give them painkillers so they couldn't feel the pain of the, of the cross death. And he refused that. He refused to take the painkiller. Until it was all over, Sister Martin. Until the very, very last minute. He told us in the book of John. In the 19th chapter. I don't know where it told you that. Yeah. In the 29th verse. Now. <clears throat> oh, start 28. And after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. Or finished. And that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. I'm thirsty. Now there was set aside a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with it, with the vinegar, and put it upon his, his sock. Uh, and put it on his mouth. The his sock was sort of like a painkiller. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He waited right down to the very last. And he said, it is finished. Turn to the book of Timothy. I'm building into my message here, people. I'm building into it. We read about another man called Paul. After the death of Jesus, and after he went on, they began to persecute the children of God. They began to seek out, bring them into trial. And one of the greatest ones, one of the ones that done the most fierce work was a man called Paul, or Saul. He was known as Saul at that time. Which I, I heard a fellow teacher a uh, uh, lesson on him. Says Paul had several names. People had several names. Then one of them was Saul, one of them was Paul. So he changed his name to Paul after he was converted. But right here, he, he was going. He went to the high priest, and he got letters from the high priest to go out and get the Christian to bring him back for trial. He was working hard. He was, he was a hard worker, boy. He went out and he got. But he's on the road to Damascus. He met Jesus. And there he repented and he started a brand new life. Yes. And we can read about Paul and all the things he done and all the th times that he was. You know, and, and one of his, his ministry was one of the greatest things to me to, for something for Kim this morning. Paul done 99.9% .9 of his preaching behind bars. Mm -hmm. On the streets. Very few times you read where Paul was in the synagogue, in the churches. He was on the streets, behind the bars, in the jails, but he preached everywhere he was. He even went on trial, and he could have got off with it like a little misdemeanor, but he didn't do it. He sort of what they call, somehow or another, but anyway, and it wound up, he had to go to Caesar. He had to go all the way from where he was, different through different ones, through different channels, different people he was under, different judges, different kings, where he was, but he had to go to Caesar. Well, he had to go all the way to Caesar. And I've done figured that out why. Why he done all this and why he had to do this. Somebody had to witness to Caesar. Caesar was a ruler. He was an emperor. He ruled the world at one time. Roman Empire, at one time they ruled the world. 
But Paul was the man that could witness to him. Paul witnessed to everybody he was to his through. Every word, every one he was in front of, he witnessed about the Lord. And old Agrippa, he got so close to Agrippa that Agrippa said, almost thou persuadest me to become a Christian. Almost, yes. Paul. Yes. But it's not convenient for me to pray right now. Yes. It's not a convenient time. I can't, I can't give my heart to God right now. That's the trouble with the world today. It's not convenient for them to serve God. If we waited until it was convenient, hey, none of us would be here this morning. No. Well, he done all that. And he got to Rome and he was in jail. Boy, he wasn't in jail, they had a house. He was sort of like a, a runaround. He had a guard that went with him and there were, and he had some visitors would come in and visit him. That's where all the letters that he wrote in this Bible went out, went out from that house he was in. He wrote different churches and he, he wrote the Bible in the house where he was. That's how much, you know, we get people today that commit crime and they don't send them to jail. They send them to a, a place where they got, oh, they, they, they set up for life. You know, they just can't get out and run around like we can. He couldn't go out like we could. But at least he had, he had a guard to watch him and everything else. And he was there. And it come down to the point when he had to play seat. And in 2 Timothy, Fourth or fourth chapter. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, starting with the sixth verse. This is Paul saying, he realized the end is near. He said, For now, for I am now ready to be offered at this time of my departure is at hand. At this time, the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. People, that's my message this morning. I finished my course. Each and every one of us, our days are numbered. Yes. Your days are numbered. And you young people, if you think your days are not numbered, walk through a graveyard sometime and look at the dates on the tombstones. Yeah. You don't have to be old to depart this whole world. And it's not always by accident. There's young people that depart this world through sickness. Right. And as we get down to the point as Paul did, is my departure is now at hand. You know, and like I say, <clears throat> in a few years back, I used to go along and not worry about my departure. I worried about his coming. But I've done got to the point now, and there's a lot of us here, we've got my departure is at hand. Our yeah. departure yeah. is at hand. Our days are numbered. Yes, that's right. There's some of us sitting here that may not be here next week. Yes, right. I hate to say that. I may not be here tomorrow. I want to finish my course. I don't care about your course. I don't care about what you do. I don't care about what you have to do. I want to finish my course. Amen. I want to be faithful right down to the I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. Yes. That's what we've got to do. We've got the heart. I thought Margie was going to get all over my face this morning. <laughs> we've got to keep the faith. We've got to hold on to God. I don't care what happens. Amen. We've got to set an example. I don't care what happens. One other scripture let's get to here. Let's talk about a certain now. Let's go back to the book of the okay. parable of Jesus talks. Okay. Just down the earth. You know, we talk about the ministers. I've got a court, minister of a court, but every one of us. I've got a course. God didn't call us all into the ministry, but He did call us all to be witnesses. Whether we talk to anybody or not, our lives should be a witness. You know, I read in the Bible in the early days that uh, after Jesus left and the apostles, they began to work 
and they began to grow, you know, and people began to get saved, you know, and they had their services, you know, like they had. And she's talking about them home prayer meetings. That's, that's, how, that's all they had back in the apostle days. After Jesus left, they had home prayer meetings. That's all they had. Yeah. And they were the busy established a church, you know. Oh, but it all started out with home prayer meetings. That's how this is started out. Home prayer meetings. Over the little town called Dutch. Uh, that's how most of the church houses look. They start out with prayer meetings. But anyway, we had all that in the middle of the brain spot. But anyway, kept on and on and on. But we've got a course to finish, every one of us has. Yes. Every one of us. Yes. In the book of Luke, the 12th chapter. Of the 16th verse. This is Jesus speaking. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty of good crops. And he thought within himself, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. And he said, This I'll do. I'll put down my barn, pull down my barn, build greater, and then. <clears throat> will I bestow? <clears throat> and then will I bestow? Then will I bestow all my fruits and my goods? And I will say to my soul, so thou hast made thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy needs, eat, drink, and be merry. All right. Now here you watch. I don't know, I got to work, no, I'm here, sure he's a hard worker. Had many people working for him, and, all, and he had a big farm probably, and all of it, all of it, he had one good crop. And it was going to last him several years. You know, there's a lot of folks out there got a lot of wealth acquired that they plan on it lasting them for years, and material things, it will. And let me tell you this morning, there's nothing wrong with saving for a rainy day. Not a thing world wrong with it, people. Because we never know when something's going to come up and we're going to need some financial help. And if we, you know, my trouble with saving is I, I put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. But he done all this and he got, he thought of himself. That's the point I want to get over this morning. We can't worry too much about ourselves. We gotta look after ourselves. We gotta take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sister Martin said this morning in her lesson, we got God must come first. Yeah. God got to be first. Now this man, the fact he had all that is not what God taught, what Jesus told him. What we're talking about when I'm fixing to read here. But the fact is that he had it all, and the only one person he thought about was himself. I'm going to take care of number one. I'm going to take care of me. People, we've got to take care of ourselves, but we can't neglect everybody, somebody else while we're doing Yeah. We're here to help people. Not here to give them everything we've got, but we're here to help them. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. If you ain't got it to give, you can't give it. That's right. Money-wise, but, but your time, you know, sometimes I have to take a little time to do something for somebody because that, that's the way God wants you. Yeah. I take my time away to do for them. I get tired of weary sometimes. But in verse 20, he said, But God said unto him, Thou food, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is it that he has laid up treasures for himself and not riches toward God. God just stopped him right there and said, Thou fool, you're a fool. A foolish man, a fool, is anybody that will not recognize God. Yeah. That's a fool. 
He didn't recognize God. He said, Thou fool, this night, thy soul's going to be required. You're, you're going to leave this night. See, one of these days, if God tarries, if Jesus tarries, he's coming. God, nobody knows when Jesus will come back, nobody but God. When God gets ready for Jesus to come back, he'll come back, and we're all going to go to meet Jesus and be with him forever. Right. Just Martin, you were talking this morning, I thought, you know, we were talking about people that done gone on. They don't know nothing about what's going on down here no more. They don't even remember the hard times they had. That, it, it, it's just like a brand, like a new birth, like they just been born again. And that's all they know is in paradise. Now the ones that made it to hell, they know about what's going on down there. Oh, yeah. Because the rich man died, lifted up his eyes from hell. You know, he finally told Abraham, I said, I got five brothers over there that still need to hear the word. Can you send Lazarus back? They can tell them. He said, Look, they got Moses and all the problems. They won't hear them. They sure ain't going to hear nobody to come back from the dead. So that's the way it is. And there's going to come a day in time when it, my number comes up. They not even be sick. That's right. You don't have to be sick to die. No. These people walk around, walk around on a job. <coughs> yeah. Joanne's ex husband. Was on a job site one day. Working was it working. No sign of sickness. Reached down, picked up the shovel, started back to work, fell over there. Nobody know. Fifty something years old. Gone. My dad, 43 year old, a man of God, a mighty man of God, came home one day and he was hurting his chest. Went into the bathroom at 43 years old. Died with a massive heart attack. Yeah. Yeah. People dying every day that's not sick. You know, there's one good thing about being sick before you die. You do have a chance to pray. Yeah. That's one good thing about it. If a if doctor tells you you got cancer, you got six months to live, you got time to pray. You have a heart attack or stroke, you ain't got time to say that. Like Bill said one time, he's up on a big old high house. Yeah. Doing a chimney. All of a sudden he lost his foot. All he could think about was grabbing a hold of something to hang on. And luckily he didn't fall. But had he failed, he didn't have time to pray. No. And I got sick one time. And my, Joanna and my wife, she can attest to it, that I did, I was that night out of my mind. I was to the point where I couldn't pray. I knew, I knew the Lord, and I knew God. If, if other people had to pray for me, I don't know what. But when her son got down on his knees in my, in my hospital room there, he got down on his knees, he began to pray, and I began to see then. I began to, my eyes spiritual eyes were open, and I began to see the Lord. I began to see, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't see that bright light like everybody said, but I realized that I was going on to heaven. He finally calmed my thinking down to realize that, hey, I'm going to meet the Lord. Huh? People, we've got to finish our course. And the only way to do that, I know, is one day at a time. Amen. Come on. Always be ready. When the Lord can use you. Yeah. You know, don't never get to the point where when you have to pray for somebody, you got to pray for yourself first. Yeah, come on. Don't never get to the point where you got to pray through to pray for somebody else. I've been there. I've been there, people. I, I'm going to admit it. I've let myself get that way. And it ain't no good for you. I mean, I don't pray out loud all the time. But the Bible said to pray without ceasing, and that let me know that when you start praying for something, don't, don't quit. Don't quit praying for it until it's done. I used to think that means praying every day. But then I began to realize pray without ceasing means to don't quit. Don't quit. But our, I, I just want, to, I want that to sink in. I don't want it to sink in me, don't think in nobody, that my time's coming up. I expect to go to be with the Lord before he comes back. 
I'm looking for him any time. Jesus is going to come back tomorrow. He can come back today. But I think that I'm going to go by the way of the grave. I mean, listen, folks. Let's be, you know, talk about, I mean, I've got a mom in heaven and, you know, I'm glad she's there. I got a daddy in heaven. I'm glad she. I got a sister in heaven. I'm glad she's there. And one day, if I hold true to God and I plan to do that, I'll be there, and you will too. But I live that life, Mary. I live that life expecting that I'm going to die tomorrow. I want to live my life every day like it's going to be my last day. I go to bed at night thinking, I might not wake up in the morning. I may not wake up in the morning. I begin to ponder over, have I done anything today, Lord? Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Is there anything? If I, if yes. I wrong anybody, forgive me. Yes. I know we all worry about this. I know death is sad for a lot of us. And I, I got more, I worry about if something happened to me, about him or other children, about Joanne. I've, I've tried to do everything I can to make sure something will be there for them when I'm gone. But one of these days, our lives going to be over. And what's going to count have we finished our course? A lot of times in a marathon race, you have those that can finish first, and those that finish last, and then you got some that just can't make a break. Yeah. They're just somewhere along the line in the marathon race, they can't make it. Now there's one thing about this race that we're running for the Lord. We can all finish. If we don't, it's because we allow ourselves to fall by the wayside. That's right. You got something to place off in our team? Uh -huh. I want her to get something together. I want to give you an I want to open this off. Give an opportunity for us. Young folks, middle aged folks, and anybody else, I suppose I'm going If you want to pray, I'm opening this off. Congregation stand. I want you to think about your life. Think about it. Now I'm going to tell you, I know every one of us is human beings this morning. We're still in a human body. And like she said about the children. I've got mad before and said things I shouldn't say. I've got mad and done things I should do. I've wronged people that I shouldn't do, but I've, I've always tried to go back and you know, apologize to them and make it right. But there's one thing, you know, I want to do everything that I can do. And I've realized in the last days that I've lived in, most of my ministry is not, not in this church. It's out there. It's out there. That's where it counts. We can all shout and praise the Lord and have a good time here. But this right here is services like this and helps us to grow to go out there and do it. Anybody need prayer? No. Listen, feel that prayer come right on there. Come on. Come on. We'll pray we can all, we'll anoint you to pray for you or whatever. You sick in body, come on.